Guys go up and tip control of North Carolina. Dave Cole Scott has it. Tar Heels will attack first and dish to him for man for man defense. You see Bender on Cole Scott. And you'll see a lot of movement now here by the North Carolina team. A lot of movement off the ball. Worthy. And Star stays right with him. Michael Carr driving. Rebound, Pickle Bell. Banks has it for Duke. Does a good job of a juggling act, and Duke comes down now. No score in the game. North Carolina matches up man for man. Worthy on Banks. They might match up man for man now, but they're going to go to a zone in a minute. Yeah, here's the man that goes to Jeminski. Jeminski gets the ball there in the hole. It's Excellent the movement on the part of Mike Jeminski that time. When they were able to swing the ball back over, he had Wolf right on his hip. What they need to do is drop that ball and defensive forward on the opposite side behind him. Ben Staler has good move by Jeminski. Why well, Jeminski for a big guy is like a ballet dancer. He's never fouled out of the game in his entire career, and he's a senior. Ben Staler's got a big assignment tonight. Right now, he's the man guarding Al Wood. There's Duke zoning yep. sideline out of bounds. Normally, you see a team do that, of course, end line, but not very often a sideline situation. North Carolina now adjusting to the zone defense. So they always, Jay, here's Worthy, 15 footer. Rebound, Banks again. Good outlet pass to Taylor, and he's down here quickly. Vince Taylor cutting him off at the charge on Taylor. Cole Scott cutting him off nicely. Taylor picks up the personal foul, ball control. North Carolina gets possession of the score, 2-0 Duke. Taylor really had no place to go that time. He tried to cross over, and Cole Scott, one of the quickest fit, uh, fellows in the league in regard to his feet. Look at him slide on over. Did a good job. Squared up defensively. I disagree. The man never got in position. <laughs> well, we got one vote for one against. I'll abstain. Two no, nothing. we got two for The referee voted my way. That's the one against, right? The other two disagreed with you. There goes O'Karn setting up. Whoa, who's open? Rebound. O'Karn goes over the back of Gene Banks. That'll be a personal foul on Michael O'Karn. First foul against North Carolina. Duke leads 2 0, and North Carolina is not going over a minute and a half without scoring in this game. Of course, Al Wood hadn't touched the ball in shooting position. That's something you're not going to see very long. Dean Banks doing a great job locking out that last time on the court. And Vince Taylor's doing a good job defensively. The Jump far switch. Away. Yep, double team, and threw it away. Was that off the fingertips of Worthy? Yes, it was. Worthy got his fingertips on the ball, and Lindy Works was right there on top of the play. By he really was. By midseason, Worthy will be taking balls like that, just as Dudley Bradley did. Here's the double team. They're jump switching all over. Some catch. What a catch by Javinsky. Oh, what a play. Javinsky up with a tremendous catch on that ball. 4 nothing, dude. That ball almost went into back. Here's Vince Taylor on Wood. Wood driving inside. And he's fouled on the play. That will be good. Well, Billy said, said that wouldn't last long. Well, let's go to the other end. There's Bob Bender. He just thrown it up for grabs. He does throw a good lob pass. Jaminski goes on up. Excellent play. Great catch, as you mentioned, Jim. Oh, Chance for three-point play by Al Wood, who scored 24 last night in North Carolina's opening victory over NC State. Three points it is. That cuts the Duke lead down to a point, four to three. Played about uh, two minutes and 15 seconds. Boy, North Carolina double team it all over the floor. Oh, great pass. And what a tremendous block for North Carolina. Here comes O'Corn. Three on two. O'Corn, the middle. He never did that throughout the first half of last season, Jim. The quickness in his feet so different than what it was last year. It's not even funny. Five straight points by North Carolina. The Tar Heels lead for the first time. Jaminski inside. Got position. Should go. He will not count. He walks. Turnover to North Carolina. That's up Bill Foster. Up and down the sideline. Well, the Duke bench. Right now, North Carolina doing a lot of jump switching. I think Jaminski's going to be open a lot more once the Duke kids realize where this pressure's coming from. Now Wood up over Vince Taylor, and Jaminski's there to get it to Duke. Oh, Jaminski almost pulled the string, and now here goes Kamar driving. Boy, that's real basketball. That was a beautiful pass. Six to five. Duke dances back on top by a point after three minutes and ten seconds. Playing straight man to man. Banks is staying away 
from O'Corn outside. There goes Worthy on his move over Denard. Rebound. Jaminski got one hand on it, couldn't hold it. In an inbounds play, Jim Suddeth now. Designated shooter comes in from the Duke bench. Left-hander, great outside shooter, and now he's probably going to be Duke's sixth man for the most part this year. Jim, he may be the most improved man on the ball club. Great block oh, by Chemetsky. Chemetsky gets it to Tinkerbell. Gene Banks, here goes Denard, driving. Boy, that was a great block by Jaminski. What we have in the game, too, with Suddeth in here, he's big enough to play Al Wood. And you'll see he's matched up that way. Now Duke is matching North Carolina defense. Uh, Duke fast breaks where they worked the last couple of times. Eight to five. Blue Devils back on top by three. They once led by four. There goes Worthy now hooking up over Jaminski. The rebound is down by Bender. Bob Bender by the first time he touched the ball. Bob to Banks. And a foul on the play by Worthy. James Worthy, the freshman, fouling Banks. He missed that last shot, but if you noticed on that drive, he switched it over to the left hand, and even though he did miss it, it was quite a play. There's a timeout on the court with the score, Duke 8, North Carolina 5. Mike Jaminski, who's play at both ends of the court, have been outstanding so far. There, there was a double team. Wolf comes across, going to use the left hand well. Jaminski blocked it out of bounds. Bounces around off Wolf. You notice he still is in bounds, and that led to the fast breakdown at the other end of the court. The big Duke's ball play as play resumes here. Blue Devils lead by eight to five. Jim Suttoth down the lineup. He charges. A charge right into Al Wood by Suttoth. Turns the ball right back to North Carolina. Tar Heels have a chance for the basket to cut it back to one. And Rich Yonaker now is coming to the North Carolina lineup. So Yonaker is in. A one-guard lineup right now. Al Wood will be listed at guard, although he's more of a natural forward. They're going out of that box with that passing game, so everybody handles the ball. really doesn't make a difference. Beautiful back door. Well, back door by O'Corn. Four points for O'Corn, eight to seven. One point lead by Duke. North Carolina still double-teaming, trapping all over the floor. Duke spreading out now against the double team, making North Carolina work. Banks splitting the defenders. Here's Jaminski, baseline. Way down is hauled off by Worthy. Good outlet pass here to Cole Scott on the fast break. North Carolina goes back on top, 9 to 8. Did you notice how Worthy threw that ball just with a flick of the wrist, and it went 40 feet? Great times, the late James Hands. 9 to 8 right now, North Carolina on top. Here's Sutter. Boy, he gets shooting room. Look out. He can fire. He's getting a lot more confidence because he knows he's going to play a lot this year. Puts the ball up very well. And Duke's back on top 10-9. That's the first basket he's ever scored, I believe, against Carolina. Is that right, Jim? That's true. Boy, in two years, he's never scored a basket to right then. Now Duke gets the ball with a one-point lead at 10-9. Watch North Carolina's double team, and they don't try to steal the ball. Oh, look at that lob to Jaminski. He was fouled on the play by Yonaker. He would have had another easy basket. Here we have They're trapping all over the floor, playing a little bit of zone back in the backside there, and Jaminski's going to be wide open in this situation. Yonaker just can't handle him. Bender looking down court. See those eyes? Looking for that lob. Throws right over the little zone. Jaminski pushes off a little bit. Yonaker hits him. Basket did not count. That's right. And there'll be no free throws. That was only the third team foul. So Duke will just trigger back in bounds here. Leading by one at 10 to 9. North Carolina man to man out of bounds. Staying right in that trap. Still by Cole Scott. Cole Scott on Bender looking for help. O'Corn gives it right back. And a great play by Bender. Draws the charging foul here by O'Corn. That's number two on O'Corn. What a great defensive job by Bender because he had no chance. Or was that uh, Denard? We'll see the play coming right up here. And fellas just don't stop at that foul line. Coach, you always used to teach that. And they keep flying on down there. And right now, defensively, the people aren't even playing the pass. They're playing the guy that threw the original ball. So you might get a pulled up a little sooner. He'd had a good play. You can make them come get you. And then those two men on either side, men on either side is free. Bender drew the foul. Here's Duke back with the ball, leading by one. Oh, what a nice pass. pass. Whistle by Sutter. Here goes Gene Banks. 
Eugene Banks puts Duke back on top by three at 12 to nine. Duke's starting to recognize that pressure right now, and they're all getting open. Initially, they started to try to go ahead and ramble, scramble against it, got them in some trouble. James Worthy takes it right inside, and now Al Wood pumps, blocked outside by Jaminski, put up by Cole Scott. He's like a fly swatter. He just goes up and slaps it right back out. 12-11, Duke's lead is one. That brought Dean Smith off the bench. He just wants those referees to get aware that Kaminsky is going to be a shot blocker trying to get some help. Ah, Banks trying to make a play that wasn't there and uh, comes out fortunately because he's fouled on the play by Worthy. Second personal foul on James Worthy. Team foul number five. By some player, he's going to already is. Jim, Question. I was saying a minute ago that in North Carolina's trapping defense, they're not trying to steal the ball. That's not the thing. That's the way you make fouls. But you get your hands up and make that offensive man throw a long pass, and he can be intercepted. They're playing it right. Rich Yonica returns for North Carolina. John Virgil in the game, too, for the first time. Virgil, a good shooter, as you know. Here's Eugene Banks. He was a super recruit three years ago out of Philadelphia West High School. And he scored over a thousand points in his first two years. Although he probably had a little bit of a disappointing year last year, mainly because of a leg injury. Had him hobble through the late stages of the year. 1978 Rookie of the Year, the ACC. Now James, uh, Jimmy Black checks in for North Carolina. Had an excellent performance last night. A great defensive player, but now he's Turned into quite a floor player, too. Two-point lead, 13-11, Duke on top. A little full-court pressure here by Duke man for man. They'll jump you, though. They're jumping, right. They saw Jimmy Black come in there, and they go to work, forcing the turnover. Duke gets it back, leading by two. He said it's six, almost 6-6. Six, six. Denard, 6-7. Six, That's a tough assignment to throw over them in that trap. Good work by Yonaker. Yonaker's going to get it driving behind his back and will come up for Duke. Bender to Jaminski. Jaminski down low, goes up and draws the foul. The foul will be on Wolf. Billy Ben must have worked on that in the parking lot. <laughs> as long as how fast. Well, Bender looks uh, looks forward all the time for Jaminski. That was a good pass, quite a catch. Here he is catching it, came to the jump stop, almost walked there, put it up, gets fouled. Let's get go to the line. ACC Player of the Year a year ago. Led his team uh, in the scoring and rebounding. Over 23 points and 14 rebounds a game last year. That's unusual. Let's see if Duke comes back with that full court pressure. And as I said, they only have Bob Bender in there under 6'6. Six, six, so they really put up some tall people at that front line. There's Virgil touching for the first time. Now Wood. Tipped out by Eugene Banks of Duke. And with Jaminski all the way back on that particular press, you've got a great shot blocker at the end of the court. That's protection. That's what you really call good protection. So you lose your man, you're probably not going to get hurt. Yeah, he's not, nobody's going to take it right to the hoop on it. It's like Bill Russell when he was with the Celtics. You can dive all you wanted to. Nobody was going over. 1-3-1 one, one zone now by Duke, and they've got Kenny Denard running the baseline. There's Yonaker at the baseline. He's got a good touch, a big left-hander does, from Cleveland. 14-13, Duke's lead now, melted back to a point again. Here's a double team by North Carolina, and Suttoth pushing off on Wood. Picked up a foul, ball control, that'll get the ball to North Carolina. They'll have a chance to go on top. Now, Jimmy Suttoth really did a smart thing when he came to meet the ball when Bender was in trouble. What happened to Suttoth? Nobody came to meet the ball once he had it. And a lot of times, it's really not the passer's fault. Nobody came to give him an outlet. Michael Corrin back in, North Carolina. Al Wood goes out, so it's Wolf, Black, O'Corn, Virgil, and Cole, and uh, Yonaker for North Carolina. For Duke, Bender, Denard, Jaminski, Banks, and Taylor. That's the original starting lineup. Man to man this time down the court. Remember, they were in a 1-3-1 the last time. There's a great deal of difference in the game tonight and last night when these two teams play different teams. There's not as much substituting, I'll tell you. Oh, Corn comes out of the pack, gets open, and rebound by Banks. Boy, he's been one up on the board. Two on one. Now Bender driving, gives it to Denard. There's third layup off the fast break. That's a great two-man play. Another play by Bobby Bender. 
Beautiful move. Came back to steal the ball. He's really a veteran ball player. 16 to 13. Duke back up by three. 11.50 to go in the first half. Notice how Duke is not playing the step out man at all when the big guys go outside. So there'll be no pressure on that passer, but it's hard to get something inside. Kaminsky just clogging up in there. There's Wolf backing away from Jaminski for the jump shot. Rebound, Virgil, good fake up over Banks. Rebound out, tipped out to Banks, and uh, Duke's got it, leading by three at 16-13. Quick break, Vince Taylor, 15-footer. I don't believe I've seen Duke try to fast break. They've done a good job at it, but they're, they're trying every time to get that break. That's the biggest lead, five points, with 11-10 to go in the first half. North Carolina only playing with one guard, so they're a little bit susceptible to the break because they've got all the guys that naturally want to go to the board, so not many people back. Virgil, a uh, guard, is normally a forward. Jimmy Black's the one true backcourt man in there. Now Duke's going to rest their regulars a little bit. Angela comes in, so to set it, and there's timeout on the court with a score. Duke 18, North Carolina 13. <laughs> the action 18-13 a five-point lead due by Duke the biggest of the game they made a couple of changes the Blue Devils have they're gonna rest Bob Bender they brought in Chip England who put on a great shooting surge here last night hitting five in a row from the outside he's in a guard, guard is jumped up by O'Corn rebound Jaminski look at the break. that pass to Taylor intercepted by Jimmy Black back comes North Carolina really wasn't there that time but it was quite a pass on the uh, by Jaminski a two hand over the head pass all the way down the court. Keith Butko number 34 in for North Carolina. Pretty good man for man here by Duke. First time North Carolina has played two big men at the same time. Butko on the hook. Keith Butko hooking over Jaminski. That's one Jaminski has a tough time. Oh Taylor driving. He beat his man and drew the foul from Virgil. Can he fly? He is much too fast for John Virgil. First foul on Virgil. And that'll be team foul number seven. Even if he wasn't shooting, Duke will go to the line here. Banks will get a rest now. Denard was out briefly, his back in. So it'll be Suttoth and Denard now the forward with Jaminski in the middle and Anglin and Taylor in back court. This telecast is presented by the authority of the Atlantic Coast Conference and the C.D. Chesney Company, and any use of this program without written consent is prohibited. The announcers on this program have been approved and contracted for by the C.D. Chesney Company. Here were these back in the ballgame now, and there for the last two occasions down the court, you had North Carolina playing two centers with Butko and, and Yoniker. First time they had done that. Of course, that balances things up to keep Kaminsky off the boards a little bit. Oh, Scott also back in for North Carolina. Looking at young Vince Taylor, just a sophomore. Outstanding player from Lexington, Kentucky. Played at Tech Street High School. And still a good pressing team. You can see when Jaminski goes all the way back and Denard fills the top spot that they're probably going to press after this foul shot the same way they were before, if they make the foul shot. 19-15, lead is four points by uh, Duke. One three one zone now. Angler putting pressure on Cole Scott. And freshman from California, very aggressive on that play. And Wood inside draws the foul on England. He got off on the wrong man. Well, what happened to him, Jimmy? He forgot that they were in the one three one. He was do doing such a good job on Cole Scott. He oh, followed him all the way well, through. Got out of position a little bit, foul. lost in the crowd. That's team foul number five against Duke. So North Carolina will have just an inbounds play here. Four point lead by Duke. Lead changed hands four times, so North Carolina has been the lead, but only by one at the most. Coles got shot well last night. Duke pretty aggressive here in the 2 3 zone. Good zone. Now Corn inside, good position, rebound by Bernard. He'd have made it if he had to put the ball on the floor. I don't see any reason he didn't gain anything by it. Duke's been very tough off the boards here. 
speed to Lennar by Taylor. Clears it right back to him. Saved it, as a matter of fact. It's almost thrown away. Duke looking to get that ball at Jaminski again. Oh, good jump switch by Wood that time. Jaminski's come away from the basket to get the shot. Rebound will be old corn for North Carolina. Jaminski forced that. That really wasn't the shot that Duke was looking for. Star Hills can cut it to two. And it'll be old corn open. About an 18 footer. That's down to two at 19 17. Old corn six point here in the first uh, 12 minutes of the game. Or less. 8.45 to go to halftime. Notice how they're trying to force Vince Taylor to use that left hand a little more. Set up on the move. Oh, what a shooter he is. Not set up with the left hand. Yeah. What he wants to be that old. 21 17. Gonna break out of his drought and style bones. Having never scored against this team. Budko works it oh, out. That's the second half hook he's made. Oh, Budko. Challenging Jaminski now. Turn the tables a little bit. 21 to 19. North Carolina back with a two. They respect English shooting ability. A pure shooter. And they've had Cole Scott right on top of England each time he's had the ball. And now England's going to go out after giving Ben to rest. Bob, number 21, returns. Well, that's exactly what Bill Foster wants from that bench this year. Let these fellas that he has in that front line get a little rest and play well. And I think with England, they're going to not only play well, but have a guy that can come in and get some points for him. Proved that last night. Hit his first five shots. And none of them short ones. Zone defense, 2 3 by North Carolina. Now, watch how few times they fake the ball in this zone. I Good penetration on. that time by Banks. Dean just was able to hang in that air and, and pick up about two or three feet to get off a nice, soft shot. Four point lead by Duke. Now they're man to man. Both teams changing up. Teams pretty good patience right here against uh, each other. Good defense and patience. Oh, nice corner on a drive and a foul on the play. First of foul, I think, will be on Jaminski. A basket by old corn is a good one. That and Jaminski's going to get, like well, what a play that was. His eighth point. He looked like he was serving with five. Now there's timeout on the court with a score. Duke 23, North Carolina 21. Well, it was a great drive. We talked about the quickness of feet. Now here he goes in. He keeps that ball in one hand. Bone said he was serving the pie. He gave Gene Banks and Mike Jaminski quite a move there. Jaminski hit actually hit the rim on the way up there, but obviously not a violation. A nifty way he kind of gave that an extra loft when he saw Jaminski out of the corner of his eye, got it over Jaminski's fingertips. But that the quickness of, of his steps this year, so much more pronounced than they were last year when he was really tired, maybe suffering a mono, and he really didn't have that ability to explode by as he did there. That was the first foul against Jaminski. Team foul number six. Both teams on the bonus now for the rest of the half. O'Connor for his ninth point of the first half. He leads all individual scores. And he just pulled North Carolina within one point. O'Connor still trapping. Nobody coming to the ball. And a foul over the wrist by Al Wood. So Wood on the double team picks up his first. It'll be Duke on the one. If you're going to make a move like he did, don't come down on top of the ball. Chances are he didn't hit the hit the man's hand then. If he had popped it up, he'd have never had a foul called on. Let's watch Duke assemble now. Men who are very good free throw shooters, so they're probably going to set up to go on that full court press, knowing that he normally will hit his. Bob, of course, missed the tournament last year because of the appendectomy, but. And missed some of the other play, too. He just didn't play enough. He was their top uh, percentage shooter, as a matter of fact. 87% from the line. One time at 28 in a row. They took, they gave the look of the press and didn't put it on. Dropped right back. Billy, I think to put it on and take it off and put it on and take it off is more effective. Oh, look at oh, Worthy. What a drive by Worthy. How he got that off with his right hand, you'll never know. Here comes Taylor on the other end. 
Vince Taylor returns the compliment to back 27 24. That bang bang play we had right there. That was the third or fourth uh, layup that Duke has had on the long pass. Real good execution of the break. Still over six minutes to go in the first half. Duke now man for man. Kaminsky going out here on Yonaker. He knows Yonaker's a little better shooter. He didn't go out that far at Wolf. Vince Taylor still got Al Woods. Done a good job on him thus far. Woods scored only three points. There goes Yonaker. That's why he do the outside. Battling for the rebound. Taylor can't hold it for Duke. I think Billy said something just a minute ago that's, that's affected Duke's fast break. North Carolina has four men in there that are accustomed to going to the board. They have nobody back. And you can tell a man, look, you got to get back. But if he's accustomed to going to the board, he's going back. There goes Worthy Walsh. Bill Foster clapping down the sideline. You see him on the side of your screen. He made that call. Uh, you see changes for North Carolina. Number 24, another promising freshman, Jim Braddock. Point guard from Chattanooga, Tennessee. 6-1, scored four points last night. It's now in as North Carolina sets up in the zone. Mike Pepper's also in there. So Dean Smith's got a lot of fresh players in. Eric Kinney, not a starter on the floor for North Carolina. Duke's got all five out there. So Tar Heels are resting the regulars here as Duke leads by three. This is a combination of the blue team. Four guys solidly in that club and one fellow to rotate. There goes Taylor. Gene Banks, a strong rebound for Duke. And strong hand. And up he goes. Oh, what a shot. Seven points for Eugene Banks, who made that all on his own. 29-24, five-point lead by Duke. Let go inside. Hooked by Yannicka. Comes out to Taylor. Taylor feeding now. Here comes Bender driving. Got to be number six. Off the fast break. And a seven-point lead, the biggest of the game by Duke at 31-24 with 5-10 to go. See how long the blue team stays in here with this attack going for Duke. Braddock was the only man back on defense that time. There's Braddock, let go. Mike Tupper and Eric Kennedy. All fresh players for the for the most part in there for North Carolina right now. Duke with its starting five. They played a good part of the first half. Good solid screens. Everybody moving without the ball. This team hasn't scored yet, though. Now they're occupying the clock. Oh, area. what a great pass from Eric Kenny. Made it easy for Butko. But goes a quick jumper. You ever notice how well he gets up there both offensively and defensively? There's the lob by Jaminski who walks. Jaminski comes down, comes down, taking steps. He got the lob pass catch all right, but then came down uh, tumbling. There's a change for Duke. Allen Williams, another freshman, 6'8", from Princeton, West Virginia, is going to give Jaminski a rest. So Mike, who has one foul, and five points and many rebounds goes to the sidelines here with 425 to go on the half 31 26 lead by Duke maybe the key play for Duke in that Kentucky game was Alan Williams making the quick foul on Sam Bowie there's a foul off the ball against Suttoth that'll be three now on Jim Suttoth first player to get in that much of foul trouble in the first half for either team and back comes the front line for North Carolina I don't think Bill Foster realized that was Suttis third. He took out Taylor, and I'm sure if he realized that it was the third, he'd try to get Suttis out of there because he's a very important player down the stretch with his ability to shoot so well. Someone on the bench should tell him, Ben. He did this last night with Bender. Bender had three fouls and got in the same situation. Stayed out there for a few minutes. So you, what happens, a fellow picks up that fourth one on a real cheap deal. You know, he is charged away from the ball or does something that gets that fourth and really hampers that second half. Rich Yannicka remains in to shoot his free throw. He gets uh, one and one. Rebound by Banks. Well, Banks had about four strong rebounds in the first half. Now if North Carolina's smart, when they get the ball, if Sutton's still in there, they'll work on it. Sutton really comes to meet the ball well, too, against this press. Smart player. Pass since a good dump to Bender. Boy, Williams made quite a pass, and it cost North Carolina a foul on Al Wood, his second. That was some pass as Williams, I think, went up to shoot. He saw Bender coming on the baseline back door and gave him a nice pass. Now there's timeout on the court with a score. Duke 31, 
North Carolina 26. Bidding for a second consecutive Big Four tournament championship. Bob Bender waits at the line to shoot. He's two for two. Jimmy's Billy. been on the line there, standing in that position now for about a minute and a half. See if it affected the shot. Yep. It sure did. He he came out and assumed that position on the line before the entire the other ball players were even out on the court. Never moved, and it's very difficult to stand in one place. Missed a pair. Only missed eight all last year, and he missed two right there. 31-26. Duke's lead remains five. Well, the young players can pick up off of that mistake. Well, worthy to Wolf. Tipped in by Wood. Al Wood on the follow. A big basket for North Carolina. Cuts the lead to three with 335 on 31-28. There's Chip England. Into the zone. Bad pass. Al Wood on the break for North Carolina. Another bad Stolen pass. by Banks. Oh, Banks is still away. Comes right back to get it again. Shovels it to Jaminski. Jaminski has been quiet for a while in the scoring column. He sends Duke back into a five-point advantage. 33-28. Uh, he's been quiet because they've been fast-breaking so well, he's never been in the half-court offense. Well, Duke's fast-breaking so, so well, it looks like they're running down him. Oh, Corn outside. Oh. What a first half he's having. 11 points. 33-30. Jim, there was, that was England's man. And when he, when he realized he had the wrong person, he left the guy with the ball who was O'Corn. Of course, you can't run away from the guy who's got the ball. He's the most important offensive player. Two free zone. Blocking the middle here. Cutting off the baseline. Inside Jaminski. Beautiful two, pass. Tamar, what an attack that zone. Beautifully. Once they hit that pivot band up high, automatically Duke sending the man along that baseline. out here there right under the basket. That's that twice. The O'Corn the other end. The rebound will come outside the wood. And North Carolina worthy from the baseline. This might sound crazy, but nobody has O'Corn as a man. And here's O'Corn being fouled by Chip England. First foul by Chip England, who got trapped off on O'Corn. That's kind of a mismatch. England's only 6'4. O'Corn at 6'8. Here's Gene Banks making the steal. Wood really made a bad pass down there. Thought Banks was going to lose it to Cole Scott. Good hands on his part. Good feet off. And look at Jaminski realizing O'Corn was there. Just pulled up. Good this, made the good stop. Got the shot off. O'Corn at the free throw line. 11 points. Working for his 12th here with his team down by five. See what's happening right now. You've got Jimmy Black in the game, and once again, he's the only true guard in the ball game. So Duke had, uh, with England in the game, they had Bender and, and uh, himself in there, and really nobody to guard O'Corn. Well, that's 13 points for Mike O'Corn in the first half, 35-32. Duke's up by three points at the two-minute mark. Taylor on a double team looking for help. Got a hurry. Very close to the five-second count. Denard deflected out of bounds. Oh. Nobody touched it. Going to be North Carolina's ball thrown away by Denard. Dean Smith there in his 19th season. All of them as head coach in North Carolina. What's the average tenure of one of the basketball coach in the ACC? About six years? Substantially less than 19, I'm sure. Worthy spots O'Corn driving. What a move. And rebound is by Denard. What's happening right now also, the Duke is trying to take the ball right into the teeth of the press. If they pull the ball back a little bit and find a passing lane, they're going to be able to get Jaminski the ball down in low. But they're trying to go right into the press. See if Taylor can recognize and pull the ball back a little bit. Not at half court. There's Jaminski. I tried to get a turn, but he's taken away. North Carolina's got it. Oh, he telegraphed his pass. Yep. I can cut it to one point here. Three-point play with tie the score. Jeff Wolf. Down to one, 35-34. Duke once led by seven, 114 to go on the half. Denard, Williams on the drive, and rebound pulled up by Denard, he's foul. Just Strong Williams. rebounding, keeping Duke on top. Williams can pass that ball for a young freshman. Yeah, see, he proved it last night. He makes a real good passer. Either hand. 
So Duke will have a chance at the free throw line to try and uh, get a little insurance. As you see Bob Bender here getting a word from his coach, Bill Foster. Boston is 60 year. We told you he's has 299 career victories. 91 of them has been as head coach of Duke. I imagine if you were to do a you'd like to get number 300 against North Carolina. Well, it's nice when they get a milestone, right? Kenny Bernard who missed the NCAA play at last year because of an injured ankle. As Duke was upset in that game by St. John's. Two point lead, 36 34, 106 to go. Denard now has replaced the lineup. So Williams is on the front line with Banks and Jaminski, and the backcourt will be Vince Taylor and Bender for Duke. Jimmy Black now a point guard for North Carolina. He's the playmaker and quarterback. Banks trying to stay right with O'Cora. Now Duke has him matched up with an equal body. There goes Virgil spinning up and in. John Virgil's first basket ties the score. 44 seconds to go. Let's see if Duke tries for one shot. Black's not going to give him a chance. Jimmy Black fouling on the play. His first one. Duke's in the bonus. So it'll be a one-to-one -one offender. And we'll see how Bob can recover now from those two misses. We told you he missed just eight free throws all of last season when he had 87% from the line. And he's missed his last two here. As Billy pointed out, he stood at the line for a long, long time. And now substituting is keeping him there again. Cole Scott comes in Surprising. for O'Corn. Now he just moved his speed a little bit, but surprising he'd stand on the line that long, get himself tied up. The thing I like to see a man do is to step back just a little way and do not look for the ball from the referee, make him hand it to you, and then step to the foul line and do the same thing that you did in practice. Strip that one. 37 to 36, Duke back in the lead. Bender's bonus. All right, he's missed three out of six. Very uncharacteristic for him. North Carolina can now score a basket here to take the lead. They're trailing 36-37 with 30 seconds to go in the first half. Oh, great play by Banks. Banks and Vince Taylor getting the forcing the turnover, and Duke now will try to wait for one shot. 23 seconds to go. Look for Bender and Jaminski looking for some kind of lob inside. There goes Banks on a drive. He didn't wait for one shot. Banks gets his ninth point, 39-36 with 11 seconds to go. That gives North Carolina time to score. They got 86 seconds. Jimmy Black tried to get it through, out of bounds. And it'll be Duke's ball. Wait a minute, Paul Hausman's going down, and he is saying the ball was kicked by a Duke player, and it could be North Carolina's ball, and you know how Foster wants to vote on all this. I uh, sure. What? But Hausman had the right angle there. He could see the play, and he's going to go ahead and give it to North Carolina. And that's what the three official gives you, that court coverage. And it's nice to see one overrule the other. I we saw it last night, Bones. Absolutely. And you've seen football officials this year eat the flag because someone said it was a different call. Well, it's the right thing to do. Two seconds here. North Carolina has a chance to get off the shot. Watch Jeff Wolf on the lob. That'll be Yannicka from the corner. Oh, he hit the gun go. A one-point game at halftime on a crucial shot there by Rich Yannicka just as the first half ended. Well, that's the exciting end of the first half of play with a score. Duke 39, North Carolina 38. And we'll be back in a moment with our halftime show. The season, at least for All-America this year. He was uh, All-America last year, most first teams. ACC Player of the Year. Now, as the play resumes, it'll be Duke's ball to start the uh, second half as their rotation on the jump ball. I don't think we had a single jump ball once the game under the way. You remember, North Carolina controlled the opening tip. That's why it's Duke's ball here, and the second half is underway with Duke leading by one point. Boy, Vince Taylor's like a blur sometimes. He's going at top speed. There is a rule, Jim, when we have some time that started that second half that I didn't realize. It's kind of interesting that you can run on the end line to start the half and even know that a basket had not been scored before that. Normally you can't move that. Well, it's not after a violation, Bill. I think that's uh, 
You can't move after a violation, of right. course. Jaminski. All right, Jaminski comes out and hit the first shot. It's a big basket for Duke. Duke up by three, 41 38. Uh, that was my point, Jim. That actually, if it's after a basket, uh, you'd be able to go ahead and move, but it wasn't after a basket. It was after the halftime. So I think it's something interesting that you can't work on uh, an out of bounds play. A little, uh, you know, <laughs> look at Banks trying to draw the foul. Didn't fool anybody. And what he did, he left O'Corn open. 41-40, back to a one-point lead. Still double-teaming all over. Jaminski open, nobody can get the ball to him. North Carolina very active here in their uh, defense. Jaminski hooking up, and rebound is off by Worthy. All right, the freshman from Gastonia giving North Carolina a chance here to go back to the top and trailing at one point. Wolf all alone in there, powers in. And I think just Jaminski's presence that time caused him to change his motion. Bob Bender from the corner, and rebound is off by Wood. Al Wood, a much better rebounder this year. Reminds me of Walter Davis. 41-40, it's a good comparison, Bones. One-point lead, intercepted by Vince Taylor, tries to do a tightrope, and he's blocked and fouled by Worthy in backcourt. Worthy picks up his third foul. Dean Smith took him out right before, with about a minute to go at the end of the first half. Wanted to make sure he didn't pick up that third one, and now uh, James Worthy picks it up quickly here in the second half. I hope the people will not ju judge James Worthy on this particular ball game so far because he really has the talent. He's just a little bit nervous. He's a freshman. Big ball game here, of course. The winner of this game go high in the pole. Leonard on the baseline. Leonard having a fine game here against North Carolina. 43-40. Duke back by three. Oh, what a worthy on the move. Blocked by Jaminski. Takes it out here. Beats a defender. What a play by Jaminski. James Worthy can't believe that Mike Jaminski got his hand on that ball because he shot it with the left hand. Jaminski was a long way away from him. He still picked it off. All right, the big guy makes some difference in there. 45-40. Duke by five. Credit that last one to Jaminski, although Bender gets the, the last one in this column. Worthy tries to go around the guard. That's his fourth. Push off foul on Worthy will be the fourth. Jay have been a little frustrated. Well, the, the officials love to call that little hook and play right there. We'll see the play by Jaminski right before this. There's Worthy going around. Makes a great play. Puts it up left-handed. Jaminski picks it off. Not only blocks the shot, grabs it, throws this perfect pass down court. Leading Bob Bender who makes the layup. Dean Smith really upset with that call on Worthy, but that was his fourth kind of thing that will happen sometimes to a freshman. John Virgil's in now replacing. Uh, Butko is also in there for North Carolina. So is Rich Oniker. A lot of changes thrown away by Pender. He was trying to get a lead pass to Taylor. There just wasn't enough room down there. You're going to find Bobby Bender, I think, more and more trying to penetrate, making them double team him, and then just lobbing to Jaminski. 45-40 Duke. North Carolina's been a little bit of a drought. Here's a foul off the ball by Banks trying to stay with O'Corn. Well, Eugene Banks got quite an assignment. Michael O'Corn has scored 15 points in this game, leads all individual scores. He did a good job trying to beat O'Corn to the spot, but Mike's really quick. Stayed down low and just couldn't cut him off. Corn on the outside. Rebound will come to Bender. Great to break. Vince Taylor will take a 15-footer. Seven points for Taylor. 47 of 40. And for the second time, Duke's up by seven. Another basket. Dean Smith gonna be looking for a timeout. Back door, Dr. Jaminski. Oh, he just closes all the passing lanes. Club playing well. Jaminski just been doing the job. Oh, good, yeah, good, job. Uh, good class by John Virgil. Boy, Virgil's timing was perfect on that play. He's encouraged here by his coach. Cutting back to five, 47 to 42, Duke. Thank you, right. 
right, Bill. Bender looked like he wanted to penetrate there. He just couldn't get through. Give and go as Banks fights in for Bender and hooks it back inside and then is pummeled out by Denard. Ball oh, hit. handle there. Ball hit the back of the backboard also, I believe, when he tried to throw it back in and get away with it. Al Wood returns for the Tar Heels, and there's timeout on the court with the score. Duke 47, North Carolina 42. Cut tickets. Best in your neighborhood here in the ACC, and that's what this battle is all about. In the Big Four tournament right now, 47 and 42, Big Leafs by 5, 15, 40 to go on the ball game. Vince Taylor has a tough job with John Virgil, who can really leap on the inside. Outside shot by Yonaker. Now that's the thing Dean Smith really wants that center to do. He wants Yonaker to do it, he wants Wolf to do it, he wants Butko to do it. Well, look at Taylor flying and right into the arms he walks as he's cut off by Yonaker. Quick, his own quickness got him in trouble that time. He Dead end straight. There are the turnovers. It was 13 to 8. That was Duke's 14th turnover. Not keeping North Carolina close. It's 47 to 44. Duke had a sizzling 72% plus the first half. Unbelievable. Birds were cut off here nicely by Taylor. They're trying to go back door, but someone is shielding on them, and they've got a clear side to do it. There's Wood with a nice pick. Rebound by Jaminski. Jaminski has some kind of body control. Big back door, Benz Taylor, good tipsy do. Rebound, Jaminski goes up and draws the foul from Virgil. John Virgil's second personal put uh, Jaminski on the line for a couple, and he's scored a little, uh, nine so far. How would you like to be in Bill Foster's place and have to replace a man like Jaminski? That's uh, a tough job. He did not get the man he wanted by his chair, of course. No secret. He wanted Stepanovich from St. Louis. And he opted at the last moment for Missouri. So that left Foster with no real heir apparent here for Mike Jaminski. You know, he's only 20 years old. A senior, he's just 20 years old. You know, he may get a job in the pros. You suppose? He may. <laughs> the fatigue factor is uh, going to be real important now for Duke. Bill Foster starting to use this substitutions here in the second half. North Carolina obviously substitute much more frequently. And if the pace this game's going particularly inside, it could be a problem. Uh, turnover lead pass to Banks. And Banks is fouled, holding by Virgil. That'll bring a howl here from the North Carolina Herons. It looked like two guys going out for a long pass. A uh, deep post pattern. And Greasy put one up about 60 yards. They both caught it and ran with it. Well, I think what happened there also is that's one of the few times, even with three officials, that you're not in proper coverage area because you never expected the ball to be down there. It was more a walking violation than anything. Our son is now being banged and over there, and another foul against Virgil. So quickly, Virgil's got four. Now that's Virgil and Worthy both with four, and he's going to stay in there. Fourth foul on John Virgil. Jimmy Black is in, replacing Cole Scott. 48-44, Duke by four. North Carolina playing zone defense. Double teaming <laughs> without a 1-3-1. They have a trap with it. They're not wanting to get in a position to keep piling up these fouls so early. Jaminski inside. 12 points for Mike Jaminski. 50-44, Duke by six. The biggest lead was seven. Showed the strength of his hands that time when he whipped that ball away in the pass. It could have been easily deflected. North Carolina looking for the weak side pass here. Oh, good inside. Great block by Banks. What a game Banks is playing. That was a spectacular play by Tinkerbell Banks. Jaminski again under Taylor. Blocked out and off the hands of Taylor. Good play then by... Virgil, you got to say this about Virgil with four fouls, he didn't back up. Well, he knows there are people on the bench who can take his place, so he can still play aggressively. He doesn't have to protect himself. Bill Foster really upset with that one. Six-point lead by Duke. You know, Yonaker with his shooting ability really forces Jaminski to follow him out much higher than either of the other two centers from North Carolina. And here's for Yonaker getting uh, time. Tipped in by Wood and a foul on Banks. And Wood will get the three-point play possibility. 
Second foul on Eugene Banks. Boy, some follow by Al Wood. Banks has had on Corn as a man, and you hate to get a foul when you're trying to cover for somebody else's man, and that's exactly what happened with Gene Banks in that rebound. Al Wood had his finest game last year in the final game against Duke. 19 points, six rebounds. Two steals, 50-47, the three-point play cut to three. Look at Taylor moving with great quickness. Rebound is taken away by North Carolina. And here's three stolen by Vince Taylor. Taylor driving back, hooking on the goal. And now loose ball picked up by North Carolina nicely. And oh, this on the play, the foul's going to be on Vince Taylor at the end of the court. That'll be Taylor's third. He really lost his cool a little bit there. Made a nice play to make up for one bad play and probably would have been better off to pull it back out, let his team get composed. All he had to do really when he drove for the basket was to toss it up in the air. He had the man, Javinsky. 13 minutes to go, three-point lead by Duke. Jemetsky has such great quickness, he can go out there on Yannicka, but he can still lay back off him a little bit and recover Wood and Jemetsky. All right, Jemetsky's like a vice once he gets the ball and it's tripped. Notice how well North Carolina's getting back against the press, though. I'm sure at halftime, Dean Smith really talked about that. Even with the great job Jemetsky's doing, looking for that outlet pass. And they're looking for Jemetsky. They get Banks inside. Oh. Jane Banks, it's his first score of the second half, but he's got 13 on the game. I thought Jaminski cleared out for Banks, and when he cleared out, everybody went with him. Well, actually, he's got 11 on the game, 52-47. Duke's back to a five-point lead, 12 minutes to go. North Carolina having trouble here trying to cut into this Duke lead. It isn't a big one, but they're holding on to it outside. Yonaker, there's what Billy and Bones talking about. Yonaker goes out so deep, and he's a threat there. He really is a threat. You can see that Mike Jaminski's respecting him. He's stepping out, and of course, that opens everything up for the other people. North Carolina in his zone now. 2-1-2. Two, two. Bender way outside. Bob Bender. Nine points. 54-49. Five-point lead. Duke 11-30 to go. There's a driving Jimmy Black, baseline. Jaminski has it taken away by Wood, and Jaminski got it again. That's great. Two on two, Banks and Bender down. Banks gonna hold it up. No advantage there because Yonaker and Virgil were back there. That was the difference of what Banks did right there with his experience and what Vince Taylor did a minute or so ago when he just forced it in and it wasn't available. Some struggle here between these two giants here in the early season. 54-49, Bender driving, tried to hook it to Banks, good defensive play to North Carolina. Here comes O'Corn, three on two break. O'Corn in the middle, I don't shut it. That's what you call the old-fashioned cat licking it. What, Bones? He called it, it's nothing but a cat lick. When he takes it with his hand like this and flips it up. It's the lead in for 51. I guess if you lick long enough, Bones will go away. Is that That's right? right? It's like candy. It's gold after a while. Here's the original starting lineup in the game now from North for North Carolina. And for Duke. Now Except Sutton. for Sutton. That's right. Sutton is in there. Oh, He's don't open. let don't him alone. Might have been too open, and they push off underneath against Jeff Wolf for North Carolina against Jaminski. Jim, that's the second time. You know, I said, don't let Suttoth alone of all the guys out here in the game. Of course, if you're Duke, you say, hey, that's great. You know, let him alone. But and sometimes for a great shooter like Suttoth, and he certainly is one of the best pure shooters in the league, you go ahead and have a, a situation where you're so wide open that you lose some of the uh, the normal rhythm and flow that you have in your shot. Foul situation could be there. There's a collision, and Worthy will be out of the game. That's five fouls on James Worthy. Gets only two points tonight. And his second varsity game, he fouls out of here with 10 23 to go. That could be a big loss for North Carolina. He was hampered by foul difficulties all evening. But you can see he just collided here on the throw. -in. Good catch by Gene Banks. He stayed right with it. No question at all about the foul on the play. Worthy kind of out of position, tried to make the big play. And here's another aspect of this game Duke now goes on the bonus. 
They'll have the one and one, and Duke has committed only three team fouls in the second half. And we get down in the late stages. If it stays like that, could be a vital factor. You know, talking about this Duke team, uh, as opposed to last year, when you've got a guy like Suddeth now, who's such a valuable player, last year he came in, it was kind of a question mark as to whether he could sustain it. He wasn't as strong, obviously, as he is now. And I, th I think the Duke club, uh, even without Jimmy Spinarco, is a much better team at this stage of the year than they, they were last year. What do you think, Jim? Well, you never replace things that uh, Spinarco did for you, but you give another uh, dimension here that Taylor can do for you, and you're getting better performances from Banks Nunard. I have to agree with you, Yeah, Bill. I think they are strong. 56-51, Duke by five. Boy, they've been a solid poised team tonight. Here goes Wood driving. And up for the follow. Will not count. The fouls on Wolf. Jaminski had him blocked out of there. Wolf went over the shoulder. Third foul on Wolf. You'll see here why the foul was called. You see, Jaminski isn't as far out when he plays against Wolf as he is at Yonaker. He's right in excellent rebounding position. Now, Wolf was all the way at the top of the key. Came over the top. Obviously, no basket. He did fall from behind. Let's see what the Bill Foster saying. Wait a second. Are they counting the basket or not? No, there's no basket. Basket did not count. It's 56-51. It is going to put Jaminski at the free throw line for the one and one. So they come down to the other end. A loose ball foul. It was not a ball possession foul. You saw the ball in the air. We were talking earlier, if a man goes over another man's back, even if he doesn't foul, nine times out of ten, it's going to be called that way. I think he fouled that time. Yeah, no question about the body contact there. Bonus shot now for Jaminski, who has scored 13, 14 now, 58-51. Lane violation. Yeah, that one's not going to count. So Duke loses a point, 57-51, to 51, just a six-point lead with 10, 10 to go in the game. It's a lot of time. You can see... Bill Foster's disappointment in that play. He wanted to know who, and nobody gave him the answer. I know. He was afraid Jaminski could find out and hurt him. Taylor almost steals the way. Can't telegraph a pass or get as quick as Vince Taylor. Duke not changing up defenses quite as much here in the second half. Staying with that man-to-man. Jaminski kind of patrolling all the area in blue. There he goes, and Sutter from behind after he lost Wood, tried to recover. Personal foul number four on Jim Sutter. So mark that down in the back of your mind. Sutter's going to go to the bench now. Denard comes back in. Here's an oddity. Denard has played a good part of this game, hasn't committed any fouls. And last year, of course, he led about the whole league in fouls. Well, you know, Kenny says that... Uh he is not a guy that fouls that much. He thinks that maybe just the referees are looking for him all the time. And I think now with the good performances by Suttoth, Bill Foster can allow Denard to sit down a little bit more, if, particularly if he gets foul trouble early. You know, it's just need to look at Denard because without the heart he's got, he wouldn't even be on the squad. Good point. Wood makes them both to make it 57 to 53. North Carolina goes zone a lot of times so that they know Duke's not going to pull him out of it yet. Long one by Fender. Tipped up by Jaminski twice. twice. Got it on the second time. Well, he's playing a fine ball game, having a great tournament. 15 points for him, 59-53. Yeah, contender for MVP, well. See, he's not following Wolf out like he does with Yannicka. Here goes Virgil on the move. Rebound, and it was out of bounds to Duke. Touched last by Wood. Wood wide tried to go up between uh, Jaminski and Denard. Good block out by Kenny Denard. Good solid rebounder. Jimmy Black in from North Carolina. Backcourt. Oh, Black and Cole Scott both in there. Now it's a pretty quick lineup. Wow, what Beautiful. a touch pass. What a Beautiful touch play. Denard gets the basket. What a great assist by Jaminski. Jaminski just heads up all. Eight point lead. Biggest of the game by Duke. North Carolina wants timeout. So they time out on the court to score. Duke. 61, North Carolina. Chris Kennedy, because of the overplay by O'Corn, available on that backdoor cut. Just a super play by Bender, who initiated it. Good chemistry on the Duke team right now. Denar with 13 points. Eugene Banks has scored uh, 13. Mike Jaminski scored 15. That's some production by their front line. Notice how Dean Smith uh, immediately called timeout. He can see this game kind of getting away from him. That's a steal. Banks on a three on two. 
And Bass going to hold it up. That's, that's good, good smart basketball there. They're no longer freshmen and sophomores making the mistakes that hurt them sometimes last year. Playing Eight. good ball game. And Jomisky on the hook. Tipped up twice by Banks and then taken away. There was a foul on the play. On O'Corn. Number three on Michael O'Corn and personal fouls. Duke has really been aggressive and uh, attacking on the boards. Banks had six rebounds in the first half alone. Jim, what uh, Duke is really doing in North Carolina now, they're taking away that pressure defense. Bender hits ahead so well, and Jaminski catches it so well for a big guy, they're throwing the ball right over the pressure. Uh, Dean Smith's going to go for a bigger lineup. There's the shooting. Phenomenal. 64% by Duke. North Carolina may be a little subpar, but not that embarrassing. But Duke, 64%. Well, Jaminski has cut down on some of that effectiveness inside that North Carolina normally gets a lot of easy baskets. Some on blocks and some on just intimidation. Well, Smith just going for a bigger lineup, bringing in Budko and sitting down Colescott. That'll move uh, Wood back to guard. A much bigger lineup now. Some help under the board. 63-53. First time that uh, Duke has led by as much as 10. Jimmy Black outside. Nice shot by Black. He really needed to go ahead and spur his club on. Brought it down court quickly and took the good jump. There's Duke now trying to spread things out against North Carolina defense. They're still trapping, double teaming the ball. Bender. Good passes on this team. They're Back. not freezing it. They're yeah. looking for a yeah. better opening. Banks, an excellent passer. You always have to watch when he has the ball. There he goes. That wasn't the better opening. No, that was a bad shot, Billy. You're right. Eight point lead by Duke. A lot of time to go, 745. Honaker's back in there. That presents that problem for Jaminski. I right got Denard on Yannick. Yeah, they had Denard because he, Denard can go farther out. He knew he made that foul. First one tonight on him, though, and team fouls now. That is only five against Duke. So there's no bonus yet. That puts Duke in a very favorable position. They can be more aggressive. They can foul without giving North Carolina a chance to score. 7.37. Out of plane, it's just time to go. 63-55. Eight-point lead by Duke. Duke led the wall all the way in the second half. Led by one point at halftime. Jaminski got the first pass in the second half, and they've stayed on top. Butko over Jaminski didn't work that time. Here comes Banks leading the break. No place to go yet. Eugene Banks going to take it out of trouble. Vince Taylor open. Banks made that play again by not making the foolish move and trying to take it all by himself. It's a completely different basketball team between last night and tonight for the Duke team. Second time the game. They're led by 10 points. 65-55. Now seven minutes to go. Time will soon become a factor. Near steal by Bender. See, Denard really doing the job on Yonaker. When Yonaker steps that far out, Denard goes out there and plays him like a forward. And Yonaker, of course, uh, doesn't have that advantage he has when he's up there against Jaminski that far away from the basket. Oh, you think that the position Duke is in, they're a long way from winning this one, but if they do, they'll be 3-0, and oh, and it'll be against Kentucky, Wake Forest, and North Carolina. That's some start, Bill. That is quite a start, and here you see, I think, a very smart move by Bill Foster. He's given Bender, who he knows he needs on the, in the game down the stretch, he's given him a rest right now. Probably keep him out for a couple of minutes. Chip England, a freshman from Pacific Palisades, California, is in. Dean Smith counters bringing his own freshman in with Jimmy Braddock. Guard, Vince Taylor, made his move too late. Picks up personal foul number four. Now both Taylor and Sutter for Duke. Four personal fouls. Taylor's one player Duke needs on the floor. 6.49 to go and a 10-point lead by Duke. Still not the one and one, but you don't want to... Uh, that type of foul, particularly when you're going back into the zone. Yeah, because what that does, it sets up the bonus for the rest of the game. That's right. Number six in the zone on the out-of-bounds sideline again. There's Braddock. Somebody's going to have to put one in. Duke is uh, uh, against this zone. Duke is playing back in so tight. 
which is a very smart move on their part that North Carolina can't afford to throw that ball around on the outside without taking some outside shots. They're going to have to take outside shots as long as Duke's that deep in there. They're all inside the blue lane. Sure, they're way back in there. Good move by Bill Foster. And he's resting Bender all this time, remember. Nobody wanting to take that shot. Good really don't have there it is. There's a long one by Braddock. Rebound by Denard. So Duke forced North Carolina to go for the long one. And they take possession with a 10-point lead. Six minutes and five seconds to go. Uh, Duke might be a little patient here looking for a shot. Oh, what a fake. And Bender's up on the sideline. He's going to come in right now. That was a foul on Jimmy Black. Another foolish foul. Hacked him across the arms. Impatient a little bit, perhaps, on defense. Here comes Bender back with 5.55 on the clock. There's the time. Look at the fives, would you? Six fives. How did that be in a poker game with that? <laughs> I think that was really a smart play by Bill Foster. And you know, when they went to that all the way to the final four, he used to do that very well when he'd take out a particular player just for a short blow there. The team didn't uh, ever lose its continuity. We get him right back in there. Bonus shot coming for Vince Taylor. Bill, I understand he played a sum game against Kentucky. Well, he really did. He was uh, outstanding. And, of course, you see, again, it's not as easy to defense Duke this year because with, with his quickness, as opposed to Jimmy Spinarco, who was uh, obviously quite a bit slower, it dictated a style of play for Duke that they can use a little differently this year. That's a 12-point lead. There's Wood pass goes to right. Oh, Taylor. Unbelievable. Oh, oh he, blew away he was going to dunk it. He was going to dunk his it. Mind. Yep. Wide open layup, and here's Wood at the other end for North Carolina, rebound by Bender. Well, that was some outlet pass. He and Jaminski had to have some uh, signals, Taylor and Jaminski did, to get that pass to work. They did. Jaminski, and he's fouled by Budko. They dodged the bullet then. That wasn't a bad foul by Budko because Jaminski was in there for the slam dunk. And Butko doesn't have any fouls before this. Duke doing a great job. Every time that they're overplayed, they're getting looking for that lob, and they're throwing right over the overplays. Well, another season of ACC basketball telecast again, January 5th, with a big triple header. It's Clemson at Georgia Tech, Maryland at Wake Forest, beginning at 3 and at 9 o'clock. North Carolina meets Virginia. Well, that'll be something. Tar Heels against Ralph Sampson. Check your local listings for the games that will be seen in your area. Bonus shot by Jaminski. I believe that's the man going to be the MVP of this tournament. 69-55. Duke now just uh, widening his lead up to 14 points. Biggest lead of the game. With five minutes and 10 seconds to go. Time running out here for the Tar Heels. That zone really packed in there now. There goes a penetration try by O'Corn and draws the foul on Denard, which will be the third. Of course, the clock really working in Duke's favor here when they pack back in. Nobody taking an outside shot. North Carolina using a, an awful lot of passing. Of course, that's their game plan. The best outside shooter, Al Wood, is in the lineup. And Jim, Cole there's Scott, an who can also shoot outside in there. Jimmy, Jim, there's an awful lot of time. Five minutes to go in the ball game. It's certainly not time for uh, either North Carolina to panic or to Duke to feel they have this game wrapped up because the pressure is still going to come on defensively. No, I wasn't trying to uh, wide them off. Here goes a oh, no, and the foul by Jaminski. Jaminski's second personal foul. But time is becoming a factor for North Carolina now. We're inside the five-minute mark. They're trailing by 14. It's just the trend of the game. Uh, Duke lead just continuing to grow, getting bigger as they go along. Duke's packed in there. They're giving North Carolina one shot and done. Well, last year was a 10-point victory by uh, Duke. And they uh, Suddenly, old corn gone cold. He was three for three. Now he's 0 for two here in the second half. Total of 17 points. He got 17 last night. He seemed to be stuck on that. I think that's a pretty good indication right there. Old corn missing like he has. That Duke's in a pretty good commanding position. Now here's Duke again. They're going to throw right over the top of the press. 
Now, if they want to hold on to the ball, they should not let it be known that's what they're trying to do. Well, I think they'll go ahead and get that ball. Jaminski, a long back door. Oh, oh what a shot. Denard, unbelievable. Underneath the basket. 16-point lead by Jim. Here's O'Corn at the line. Mike O'Corn. The prettiest uh, shot of the night. Want to see it again? Well, Bender had Kaminsky coming up high, but he saw the long backdoor opportunity. Look at that pass. Great technique. Bender threw it down, stayed with it. Kenny Denard almost took his head off against the bottom of that backboard. Made an incredible layup. Oh, you know how tough it is to make a shot from there? Never been there. <laughs> Unbelievable. 71-57. 14-point lead by Duke. 4.15 to go. Jim, this may be the best performance of the Duke front line. Denard, Bender, I mean, Denard, Jaminski, and, and, Ken, and, and Banks, that I, I can never remember. Well, since they were freshmen, threesome. they had yeah. some great games when they were freshmen. Wow, steal by Cole Scott, gets a nice feed to Wood, and Wood is there. This is oh, a time you yeah. doesn't want to get the ball into the corner. Good hustle, Bill Foster, gonna let that happen only about one more time before he calls the time to settle his club. There goes Jaminski on the driving lane. Left hand. Mike Jaminski on the feed by Denard. 73 59. I'm too critical. I thought he walked with it. 335 to go. North Carolina now will waste very little time. Jaminski on the interception. He's taken away the whole game plan inside, isn't he? Yeah, every bit of it. Like an octopus. You know, he's got to be a little tired. He, he hadn't come out of this game but one time, I believe. Uh, that's right. That was the first half. Here's a steal, and Jimmy Black will come down. He's the guy who made the play. Blocked in by Banks. Watch Foster call a timeout on this one. anyway, so Black was going to get the basket one way or another. Almost tipped in here by Banks. Here it goes. Good hustle, though. Both clubs. Here's Banks coming in. He had that ball. If he hadn't fouled him with the body. A man needs to play like the devil's behind him all the time. He needs to know that somebody's going to be behind him. That should it never wasn't a foul, that. Bill. They didn't call a foul. They just called goaltending. Oh, I don't know if it was goaltending. I wouldn't say it was goaltending at all. What a pass to Banks. <laughs> oh, what a shot by Banks. Gee, Banks. It had to be a basket simply because they were able to pass the ball from one right. side to the other out of bounds. 75-61, Duke. Three minutes to go in the game. Long one by O'Korn. Why O'Korn's in there. 21 points for Mike O'Korn, co-captain for the Tar Heels. 2.51 to go. 75-63. Cole Scott fouled by court. Not a bad foul by him. Uh, just his first one, and it stops the clock, which is almost mandatory now for North Carolina. Can ill afford to let the seconds tick off for any long stretches of time. Just 249 to go. That's all. 209 more ticks, and Duke's up by a dozen. 75-63. Has how much time, uh, Jim, did Jaminski have in the first half? Did he? How much time did he come out of the all ball right, game? Good question. Jaminski. First half, they didn't give you the playing time. Not much, I can tell you. It was I, the, I think he just came out there maybe for a minute, minute and a half. That's about all. Here goes inside drive by Al Wood. Al Wood, some performance, 214 points for him. 75 65. Duke lead is down to 10. No harm, no foul here. Bender getting away from Cole Scott. Banks, great drive. Just a left beautiful hand. drive by Banks. They got North Carolina at a disadvantage down. You can make moves like that. You never should let a man go to the baseline, though. 77 65, O'Corn inside. Banks comes out of there with the ball and a three on one. Banks in the middle, feeds to Taylor. A picture fast break. Taylor scoring, good now pouring it off. 79 to 65. Collision at the other end. The foul's going to be on Jim Sutter. That'll be all for him. Sellers will go out. He prevented the basket, but he fouls out. Sellers scoring his first points ever against North Carolina tonight. Got four. Now there's timeout on the court. The score, Duke 79, North Carolina 65. You'll be ready for the toughest competition in Levi's Action Slacks from Belk. They're made of a 100% polyester fabric that stretches for the quick moves you need to make in the heat of competition. They have an expanding waist for comfort, and they're easy care, too. 
Get Levi's Action Slacks from Levi Sportswear at a winning price, only $22. Take on the tough ones in Levi's Action Slacks from Belk. Presenting the Sandman for Wavecrest Water Mattresses. I've been in every bedroom in... first meeting of the year here between these two nationally ranked powers and what a performance especially by Duke up to now leading by 14 points but now they're going to play at least twice more Billy and Bones and we're going to be seeing those I'm looking forward January 12th that'll be in Durham February 23rd that'll be in Chapel Hill both will be on our television schedule it'll be opposite Jim this year from what it was last year Carolina will have that last game at home this year that's right Whatever the case, let's hope it's not 7-0 at halftime. I don't think it will be. I don't think it will be. be. <laughs> you, well, I remind you that over your local stations, you'll be seeing the news right after the game. We're running late here because we got a late start. And I don't mean that as to who was winning the game. I'm just talking about the type of game. Al Wood with a bonus. 79-66, 159 to go. Rebound, Jeminski. As the MVP and man of the hour. That's right. Yeah, Mike Jeminski. I expect he'd be the man difference. of the week. Always alert. Gene Banks to Denard, and Denard from the make, follow He away. made that it shot, too. Ball, Won't count, but it was a great shot. Some play, even if it doesn't count. 79-66. You know, and Jim Sutter's ability to come in the game and take some of that pressure off Kenny Denard has really made him a lot better ball player. There's one and a version of the other end, and he does back in fouling. That'll be all for Virgil. Well, John Virgil fouls out after four-point performance with 1.41 to go. Duke now very much in the driver's seat. We'd like to take this opportunity to thank Director of Athletics Tom Butters, Head Basketball Coach Bill Foster and his staff, and Sports Information Director Tom Mickle from Duke University for their help in tonight's telecast. At the University of North Carolina, our thanks go to the Director of Athletics Bill Kobe, Head Basketball Coach Dean Smith and his staff, and Sports Information Director Rick Brewer. Our thanks also to our stage manager, the veteran Bob Royster. You know, you talked about that 300 victory before the game, and it looks like Bill Foster's got that. It doesn't look like he wants to take any prisoners because he still has that starting lineup out on the floor. <laughs> That's right. It goes to Nard just by O'Corn and his foul. O'Corn's fourth foul, 1.40 to go. <laughs> Billy, I like your line. Do you remember those milestone wins, Bones? You had a lot of victories. Do you remember Yeah, those? I remember one time uh, I had 20. <laughs> oh, come on now. Be serious. What no. I started off with six and 17, then 10 and 14, and so that really hurt. But the, the last five years, after I got Billy, well, we were all right. Are you on your way? Number 300 for Bill Foster. Looks like it's in the bank. Kenny Denard, 15 points tonight. Great performance. Rebound ripped off by Jeff Wolf. Here come the Tar Heels, never giving up. 1:35 to go. Wolf we'll drive it. Great uh -huh. by Jaminski. They'll rule goaltending on this one. So Wood gets credit for the basket. He has had some second half, 12 points in an intermission. Well, I'll see what you think. It's got to be going down, right? No, I like the drive to the basket. I think it was going down. Wood was way up in the air. Double teaming. Here's Jaminski right in the middle of the pack. 125 to go. Duke spreading it out now and making North Carolina chase. Backdoor Vince Taylor. He's cut off. Brings it right back. Good poise by Duke. This is when you want to get rid of the ball as quick as you possibly can. There goes Banks making his own play. Banks pass blocked down. He just grabs it, puts it in. 81-68. 13-point lead by Duke. Al Wood the other end. Now Wood continues to carry the flickering hopes for North Carolina. 101 to go. North Carolina kills the clock. They can do it twice more. 11-point lead by Duke. The executive producer of tonight's Big Four basketball, well, we want to show you the people that are in charge here of bringing you the telecast. Our executive producer is C.D. Chesley. The producer, Irving Snuffy Smith. And associate producer, John Run. Our director, Billy McCoy. And some of the other folks. TV coordinator, old buddy, Cedar Francis. Coordin uh, coordinating producer, Peggy Burns. Our technical director, Gary DiBenedetto. I said it right. Doug Barry's our technical supervisor. And there are other folks who help bring you tonight's show from the Greensboro Coliseum. 
the finals of the Big Four tournament. Now it looks like the Blue Devils going to reign again. This will be two in a row for Bill Foster. As we told you, it'll be his 300th career coaching victory. You know, Bones, you made a point before this game that it really doesn't mean anything in the long run to the teams. And really, if let, let's just throw this the other way around. With these two great ball clubs, you know they're going to be factors in the NCAA playoffs unless they're just a, a, a real rash of injuries or something like that because they're two great quality teams. And I, I would have to agree with you looking at it now. This doesn't prevent North Carolina from coming back and playing well any more than if the Duke had been in the short end of this first game and prevent them from coming back later in the year and playing well. I completely agree with you. The game could have gone the other way just as easy. Oh, well, didn't Duke win this game last year? Was North Carolina ranked second in the nation sometimes later? So there's proof it has uh, good trouble again. By Taylor. Got a block down the pass. Denard recovers. Spot Banks, who's open, tries to stuff it. Fouls and maybe a technical here. Banks grab the rim. First of all, I think we're going to have a personal foul, technical foul, false double foul. We can show our knowledge well, of the rules here, boys. Who's going to get the no, ball? I, I, really, ball. I, I believe Gene Banks is fouled. He and won. I don't think that's a, uh, that should be all the no, you're gonna well, get he the really technical. tried to protect himself up on the rim now you're you know, gonna get the technical though Bill it's in the rule well I think that a referee can always use his discretion let's see no they're gonna call this an undercut foul maybe No, it's gonna be uh, I think they call it personal and a technical now you may be right a two shots to banks but I think a technical foul ruled on banks also Many years ago, the same thing happened when I was in North Carolina State. We were playing Carolina. There was a technical and a personal, and the referee, instead of jumping the ball, gave the ball out of bounds to North Carolina because of the technical. Okay, here's the second. Now, we're going to go to, we're going to watch it. Okay, you see Gene goes up here, but goes underneath him. He tries to stuff the ball. Now, there he is. But see, I think if a, an official looks at that play and had an opportunity to see it on the replay, the guy was trying to protect himself from falling to the floor. That's an entirely different situation of a guy going up and grabbing a hold of that rim. Well, I don't argue with your logic, Bill, but the rule says no matter what, if you grab the rim, it's a technical. Yeah, but here's the thing that gets me. They've been grabbing that rim all night long on dunk balls. <laughs> Here's uh, now, of course, it was North Carolina's turn to get the ball on the jump ball situation. They get it out of bounds. Well, Corn and North Carolina kills the clock. So North Carolina cuts it down to 10 with 40 seconds to go. You news guys back in the stations, hang on. We'll be there sooner or later. We want to know about the situation in Iran and the rest of the world around the world. We're running late here, but the game isn't over yet. 40 seconds to go. We'll remind you another season of ACC basketball telecast begins. January 5, we'll have a big triple header that day. It's Clemson at Georgia Tech and Maryland at Wake Forest. Both again at 3 o'clock. At 9 o'clock, North Carolina meets Virginia. Now check your local listings for the games that will be seen in your area. And here tonight, Duke with a 10-point lead, 40 seconds to go. It seems inconceivable that North Carolina can make up that deficit back. Remember the game, 18 seconds, 8 points. I'm not going to even try right? to think about that ball game again. But Same two teams. That's probably what Dean Smith telling his fellows over in the sidelines. Well, the same, when you say the same two teams, Jim, the same two universities, but not a, the same two teams. Same it's a much schools. more talented team than, than Duke had in those days. Jimmy Oh, it's a foul. Backcourt foul will be on Should Jimmy be Black. a two-shot foul. Jimmy Black, third foul on Black. So we go down the other end with 39 seconds to go. That really should be a two-shot foul. Jimmy Black obviously trying to grab for everything he could there. And where do we go from here? Well, Duke University will play Princeton next Wednesday at uh, Endor Stadium and East Carolina on Saturday. North Carolina has the game Monday against South Florida down in St. Petersburg. And will be uh, back in, uh, here in Greensboro one week from tonight to play the University of Cincinnati Bearcats. Bonus shot now for Bender. That was just a one-on-one, -on -one, but I thought it was definitely an intentional foul. 80, just trying to stop that clock. 84-72, 35 seconds to go. North Carolina can't stop the clock two more times. 
And here's Butko hitting Cole Scott, 20-footer, rebound, over the backboard, out of bounds. And it'll go to North Carolina. Gene Clark. Banks got a hand on it. 26 seconds to go. And Bill Foster still hasn't substituted. There's got to be some uh, thought process going on in his mind there as to why he's not putting in some of those other kids. He's afraid that same thing might happen. That there goes with oh, oh, that Nice time out again. When Duke was able to come back and, and, and uh, I mean, when Carolina was able to come back and beat Duke when they were eight points down. 22 seconds to go. Seven point lead. 84-74. Duke is on top. We're going to have, of course, to leave you very quickly once this game's over because we're running late anyway and the news will be coming to you after this game over these stations. We'll tell you right now, Michael Korn has scored 25 points. Al Wood has scored 19 points for North Carolina with Jonica with eight. For Duke University, Eugene Banks is a great night. 22 points he scored, 15 points for Kenny Denard. 19 points for Mike Jaminski. We won't be able to stay on for the award, but we're guessing he's going to be a hot contender for MVP. Vince Taylor tonight, 13, and Bob Bender scored 11. So all five starters for Duke at double figures. Billy has pointed out uh, continuously that uh, Duke has gone with its front line just about all the way, and they're staying in there. There's James Worthy, a prize rookie for North Carolina, whose playing time was restricted tonight with uh, fouls. He finally fouled out with over 10 minutes to go on the game, scored only two points. 21 seconds to go. Duke now against the pressure defense of North Carolina. They need to get rid of it quick as they can. They don't want to be fouled. Just keep moving the ball. Good That's throw. Right. That's wrong. Right. Now get rid of it. They're going to get this game over, folks. They're eight seconds to go. Jaminski duck shot. Mike Jaminski with his 21st point. 86-74. There's the final gun. Uh, Duke University has won the Big Four with a convincing 12-point decision over the University of North Carolina. A very big victory for the Blue Devils, who no doubt now are going to shoot very high in the national polls with this win. Their third in a row and number 300 for his career for their coach, Bill Foster. So we'll say goodbye now from the Greensboro Coliseum. This is Jim Packer for Billy Packer and Bulls McKinney. The final game, Duke 86, North Carolina 74. And this has been a C.D. Chesley production.